Today we are going to get this image. Not this image. This image. Can you tell the difference? Hmm. Hey yo, this is Matt and today's video is kind of a follow up or continuation to that full figure focus video I did a couple weeks ago. In that video, I mentioned photo stacking, but I didn't really talk about it too much. And surprisingly, I did get a lot of comments asking that they would like a tutorial on that. Today, we are talking photo stacking. First off, what is photo stacking? It is taking multiple pictures of the same subject and scene at different focal points. And then in your editing program, you're going to combine all of those images and only the parts that are sharp and in focus are going to be shown and it's gonna show your entire subject in focus, or it should. And this results in your subject being completely sharp and in focus. When should you use photo stacking? For the most part, there's not really anything that requires you to do it, but if you do want something that's an ultimate focus, this is probably the best way to do it. If you're using a macro lens for toy photography and you get in there real close, photo stacking is a great way to get more in focus. And even beyond toy photography, if you're doing product photography, photo stacking can come in really handy. A lot of times for product photography, you don't want your subjects or product to have like blurry edges or anything. You want it to be crisp and sharp. So this is the way to do it, photo stacking. How do you do photo stacking? For today's example, I'm just gonna give numbers that I've tried that I think work the best. I have tried some different ones that didn't work, but feel free to experiment and try on your own as well. A quick rundown of all the settings. For the aperture, I usually keep it between f5.6 and f8. This could vary depending on how much light you need. Like maybe you need to open it up more to let more light in. You don't wanna go too high of an f-stop like f2.8 because that depth of field is gonna to be too shallow and then combining the images might be more difficult. For both lower and higher apertures, aberrations can appear too. So based off my full figure focus video, you can ask, well, why not just use F10 or F11 to get that full figure in focus? Well, in certain cases, you might be able to, and that might work, but in other cases, it might not. So if you need that tack sharp ultimate focus, then photo stacking is the way to go. Because once you start getting to F11 and the lower aperture, you're going to also start to lose some of that sharpness in your image. For the three main settings on your camera, the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed, the aperture is like the main one that you're gonna have to worry about with photo stacking. You're gonna see on our setup that we are using a tripod, so the shutter speed shouldn't matter. And for the most part, you always wanna keep your ISO at 100 or the lowest possible. You can bump it up for this uh, if you need to or just add more lights, which I would recommend. So aperture is gonna be the main one that you need to keep in range. So now that we know our camera settings, let's set the rest up and get the pics. First thing, get your figure and the set ready. Our model today is going to be Master Chief. I have a simple setup with this diorama and a pretty basic pose. I do like this pose, but I also wanted to do it at this angle to show the power of photo stacking and getting him in complete focus from the tip of the pistol to the other hand and gun. For photo stacking, one of the most important things is using a tripod or making sure your camera is stationary and won't move. Set your frame and align your shots. You need to get your lighting and exposure how you want it. I do recommend the camera being in manual mode for this, so no other settings change between each shot. For this session, my settings are gonna be f5.6, with the 1 13th shutter speed and an ISO of 100. And remember, because we are on a tripod, shutter speed isn't an issue, so you can go a little lower and slower if you need more light. And now for the fancy stuff. I'm using my 100 millimeter lens, which is also a macro lens and can get really close to the subject. I did specifically use this lens to show a greater distance from the points. Remember, we are taking multiple pics of the exact same setup. For the first shot, one important thing to know is the focal distance. Not all lenses can focus at the same minimum distance. So this first one will need to be the closest part of your subject. In my case here, it's Master Chief's right hand and his pistol. Like all my shots, I magnify in on my camera's viewfinder to manually lock in focus. Autofocus might work for this if you're picking like the single focus mode, 
but I really recommend manual. I think it's gonna be more efficient and you're, you're not gonna miss any of those focus points. So manual everything. So once you have that closest point in focus, take the pick. After you get that first pick, you cannot move the camera or the tripod or the subject and you are not changing any settings. The only thing that's gonna be adjusted is the focus ring on your lens. When I had first tried doing this a while ago, I think I only did it like with two or three pictures and this might work sometimes, but just to be safe, I would recommend taking at least five pictures, you know, for these six inch, seven inch figures, you know, I, I would even recommend going like six or seven images just to like fully get it. It also depends on your scene and setup, but then also depending on the size of your figure, like if you are going bigger or maybe you're using multiple figures that you want both of them in the shot, like at a different perspective, well then, I mean, don't be afraid to go over 10 or 20 images that you're taking. That's okay. So you, after that first pick, everything's locked in and you do need to be patient. Don't rush this. We have the first shot. Now we're gonna magnify and carefully focus a little more. For here, instead of Master Chief's gun, we're gonna focus farther back. So we're, I'm gonna pick like his wrist and forearm area. It's a very small, precise like focus point, but it's worth it and it's necessary and it's gonna be sharp focus. So for here, I'm going from the tip of the pistol in my first shot to the forearm and I'm gonna take the picture. So now we're gonna magnify, focus on the next point, take the pick. We're gonna repeat this until we get to the end point. For this setup, I used six shots. Now that we have all the pictures we need, it's editing time. I know other programs can do this, but I use Photoshop. So this is how you do it in Photoshop. I would imagine other programs that can do it being pretty much the same, or if it's not automatic, you can open up all the images as layers and then mask out the parts that are in focus. With Photoshop open, you go to file, go down to scripts and click load files into stack. The load layers window should open and you're going to select browse and find all the pics you're going to use. Once they are added, make sure that attempt to automatically align source images is checked. There might be subtle movement with the different focuses and this aligns them up better. Click OK. You should now see all your photos as layers. Now you're gonna select all the layers. You can click the first image and hold shift and then click the last image to select all of them. And you're gonna to go to edit and auto blend layers. Select stack images and check the box, seamless tones and colors. Hit the OK button, boom. So you can see each layer has a mask that was generated to show the part in focus. Is this always 100%? No. You might notice a few pieces that weren't grabbed correctly. In my shot, I didn't notice until afterward and not sure if it was from this part or just missing a shot in focus. So use it as a reminder to double check all the pieces. And once you're ready, you can merge or flatten all these pieces and start editing. So here's my final image after editing and cropping in some and just showing that image of just me like focusing on his helmet. This is what it would have looked like. So it's not bad, you know, but he's not completely in focus. Check out all that amazing focus. This was a ton of info and I hope it was easy to follow. Let me know what you think. If you do try this and you post it on Instagram or TikTok, tag me. I'd love to see it create and inspire.